Jennifer Dankberg, and I am here today with Parker signature artist, Burnham Reed. And <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Vernon's signature model and his brand new... And this is a brand new Freak Flag Fly. And you can see Vernon on tour with the Experience Hendrix. Experiencing Hendrix. <laughs> All you get. So Vernon, tell us a little bit. How did you get started with Parker? Larry Fishman uh, and Ken Parker started the company. I was approached uh, about doing a, a TV show, I think it was for CBS, about the future of guitar. And I was told that this, this guitar was using some synth synthetic materials like carbon and that it was really cutting edge. And I met Ken and, and Larry and they were just really awesome people. And I got my hands on an early prototype, and I thought it was such an interesting sound. I thought it was a very, it was a very kind of super clean, but it was super lightweight, and really interesting design. So anyway, long story longer, years later, um, you know, I, I, met, I ran into Ken Parker at a NAMM show, and I hadn't seen him in a really long time, and we uh, we started talking. And he said, and, and and I was kind of in, in a place where I was looking to get to, you know, start a relationship with a new guitar company. And he was like, hey, man, I would love to do something with you. And I was like, wow, great. And so in that conversation, I talked about, you know, the guy that built my, my great guitars at, at Hamer was a guy named Terry. And, and he was like, Terry? Terry? What's his last name? I said, Terry Atkins. He said, oh, Terry works for, for me. And I was like, are you kidding me? So when... I found out that Terry Atkins was, was part of this family. It, it made the transition just so obvious that, I mean, it was no even, because Terry, he's a master at the craft of making guitars, and he's a wonderful, he's another wonderful can-do kind of person. And I had a conversation with Terry. I hadn't talked to him in many years, and it was, it was, it was wonderful. And I said, man, you know, you made these guitars for me with a, with a pronounced V-neck. I like the V-neck from thinking of like the 63 to 65 Stratocasters, you know. I avoid them not because of my name such as the V, but I actually like the shape. <laughs> you know, as self-aggrandizing as I am, I'm not completely insane anyway. Or I'm completely insane, I'm totally self-aggrandizing, but I don't know. Anyway, back to the story at hand. Uh, what happened was uh, Terry said, you know, I built those guitars so long ago. Send me um, one of the instruments that I that I built. And I, I sent him, sent it to him, and they took the measurements. And basically the neck on this guitar is exactly the same as the the V profile is is very very close to the profile I originally had um, from my from my previous guitars. And as soon as I, I uh, started playing the instrument, I, I was very much at home with it. So let's talk about some of the features on, on your current guitar. You know, the Freak Flag Fly. The Freak Flag Fly. <laughs> Say uh, that three times fast. Freak Flag Fly. Freak Flag Fly. Freak Flag Fly. <laughs> Cthulhu Fatagon. Anyway, um, <laughs> and if you know what Cthulhu is, you are a real geek. Okay. So this guitar is notable for a, a couple of things. One, it's, it has a Floyd Rose lock and trim system, and I, it's, a, it's a system that I'm, I'm very used to, and it's a, and it's a system that's sort of in even an evolution, even as we speak. So at, at a certain point. Um, the whole notion of using the uh, 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 PCM style pickups on a Floyd is, you know, we're talking about maybe experimenting with the Ghost system. But this has got a, a Floyd uh, bridge. It uses the Roland Hex pickup. You know, I, I'm very much into using guitar for all kinds of sound making, um, using both magnetic pickups and using, you know, the Hex pickup, which is like sort of each pickup as an individual thing and I, and I use some of the rolling stuff and uh, that's pretty much the thing about it so there's a, there's a 13 pin input and it also has a regular output. So I have some questions from um, our forum members. We let them uh, email in some questions. Um, so one of one of the members says, do any of your guitars coordinate with your home furnishings, cars, etc? My home furnishing cars, etc. Is this what your your living room looks like? 
much to my wife's chagrin. Um, no, this this uh, I don't. That that's actually very. That's a that's a really provocative question. Like to accessorize, you know, uh, the guitars to that level. Uh, no, I don't really coordinate. But maybe I should start. <laughs> you know, now he, he sparked. Not why don't I coordinate the guitars with my various extravagant wardrobes? Um, but, you know, so. That's gonna that's that's gonna be the next collection. <laughs> guitars is formal wear. Guitars, you know, guitars is formal wear. You know, sports wear guitars. Definitely, you know, yeah. You know, you you have your SUV, you have your guitar, you have your. And they all coordinate with each other. And they all coordinate with each other. But anything is possible. But nothing is real. Boom. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what are your favorite? What are you? What's your favorite feature on your guitar? The, right I would now. say straight up the V-neck. My favorite, my favorite feature ergonomically is the V-neck because I just love that shape. And they're basically they are two shapes I really like: the V-neck and super round, like SG. I like that. The sort of half circle FG, SG neck. But but the V-neck is is my favorite, and that's my because the profile I'm so comfortable with it from playing these guitars for years that you know it's it's automatically I'm automatically feel at home. Now, I really like the headstock too. <laughs> we went back to the flat headstock for your guitar yeah, specifically. Thank you so much. <laughs> I really, I really do we, like that. we aim to please. Um, so now we, over the last couple of days, we've been in discussion about the evolution of your signature guitar. Do you want to talk about some of the features that you want to see in this one? Well, you mean in the future? On the on the one that we're going to be working. Oh on yeah. Next. Well, we're working we're working on um, a, 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 a guitar which uh, is going to have um, Einstein's famous equation, uh, E equals MC squared, you know, energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. And, and that guitar is going to have uh, a graphic which is going to represent everything from the subatomic to the galactic. And that's going to be the first guitar with the, with the ghost system, which will, you know, will not have the rolling pickup here, but the whole thing is going to be in the bridge, but it's still going to be a Floyd bridge. And what's interesting about that guitar is that it's going to, you'll be able to get an acoustic sound from the, the, from the pickups and the tracking. Uh, I'm, I'm really interested in, in, because everyone speaks about how highly about the ghost pickups tracking. Um, and I'm really thinking of that more for pitch to MIDI sort of stuff, you know, because I do some some soundtrack so, sort of stuff, yeah. and um, and it's very cool to be able to control, you know, virtual instruments and things like that. One of the forum members is asking what kind of picks you use, and you have a really cool pick there. Well, I'm using a tech pick, a, 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 a brass tech pick, but um, I use a lot of different picks, uh, various sizes, usually thick. Mm -hmm. Uh, I use a lot of the Dunlop picks, but I've, I've also used picks, uh, the Dugane picks. I've used picks made out of just all kinds of materials. Um, I've made picks made out of old silver coins. And the reason why I, I, I started using all different kinds of picks is because I started thinking about picks almost the way like a golfer thinks about different golf clubs. Right. So, you know, for different rhythms and things, like larger picks are really great for, for, for rhythm. Smaller picks are really good for very fast, intricate things, mm -hmm. and the various, all the different materials give you different tonal variations. They, um, they all have a different feel, and those different feels, you know, are for me they take me to different different areas. So that's basically it. I, I, I have done a lot of different kinds of picks and different materials, everything from seashell to silver. Great. Um, your guitar, it has 22 frets. Yes. Why, why 22 frets? And that was 22 fret. Frets. You know, 24 fret guitars. I mean, it's really obvious because you know it's two octaves. But I, I just have this feeling that, and I've gone back and forth over the years that 22 fret guitars, for me, um, sound better. And that's a, that's a that's a judgment call. You know because. I play 24 fret guitars that sound wonderful, mm -hmm. but um, I just can't kind of came back to the 22 fret standard because the 24 frets it kind of moves all the pickups slightly 
closer to the bridge um, and it changes the overall character mm -hmm. of, of the instrument and um, you know I just uh, just kind of am there. So let's talk a, a minute about clinics because you are going to be doing some motiv motivational clinics yes. in conjunction with the Experience Hendrix tour. Yes. Why, why are they motivational? Well, they're, they're motivational in the sense that when I, when I talk to people, I talk about different, uh, well, I talk about my unlikely path to getting to where, uh, you know, how Living Color even happened. And there's so many happy accidents along the way. And, and I do talk, I talk about guitar and I play some tunes uh, and I play some, some stuff. But really, I, I like to engage people about about how music occurs mm -hmm. um, and how different events happen to shape my lives and also to motivate people to um, to follow their path and get on their own path and not attempt to live live the life another person's life find your own voice that's that's the most important thing yeah. and that's a lot of what I talk Sounds good. And in conjunction with Parker, you're also going to be um, demoing the Randall MTS system, which yes. you also play. Mm -hmm. Yes. And your your go-to mods right now. The KH one I use I use a, a lot. Um, the Plexi and is the, one. And then the tread plate. Which and the tread plate. And the tread plate. You know, I'm a, I'm a recto guy, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the recto the, the Mesa Boogie rectifier is really. Uh, a seminal amp. I mean, it really changed the whole mm -hmm. boutique amp thing right. in, a, in a way. And so, the tread plate uh, is something that I, I hold near and dear. Right. Well, Vernon, thanks for coming and chatting with us. It was, it was great to see you again. And we're all, we've got a lot of the public excited about your guitars and um, excited about having you come out to their town to play at dealers near you. Do you have any yeah. last words for us? Um. It's great to meet all of you. It's great to work with you guys. You, there's, a, there's a great crew here, really cool people, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the future with uh, Parker and Randall and Washburn. It's funny, like we talked about yep. how I, I, I wrote a bunch of the songs for Vivid on a, a Washburn festival, and, and it was crazy to see... Uh, that guitar, I was going, wait a minute, I, I, I wrote a bunch of songs on that one, so. It all comes full circle. It's all full circle. <laughs> one big ball spinning around. Yeah, one big ball, I said that. <laughs> spinning around in the... All right, thank you so much. <laughs>